I would like to welcome our panel, David King, Tom O'Neill, John Keller. We often talk about two types of leadership, transactional leadership and transformational leadership. Uh, this certainly was a transformational presidency in that we have the first African American, but a successful transformational leader usually is somebody who, as soon as they're behind the scenes, compromises. A transformational leader needs to inspire us and then threaten inside the Congress and cut deals to get things done. That's what I'm going to be watching for. And with the majorities in the Senate and the House, um, Barack Obama has the right cards in his hand. Uh, Barack Obama talked to the American people, as you point out, as an adult. And we watched an election take place where the presidential candidate not only spoke as an adult, but was accepted by the electorate as somebody who could bring transformational change in a very meaningful way. As far as this being a transformational president, we'll see. You find out during the presidency if it's going to be transformational. The election in and of itself doesn't mean that much. It's what they do when they're in office. The key element to the election outcome was, and I would just throw out one to consider, good manners. Uh, Barack Obama has them. Uh, and he displayed them at every turn in the road. If we conduct ourselves in a certain way uh, and indicate by doing so a level of respect for one another, we can get more done. I'm a little fearful for the new president that Expectations are so high uh, that he won't be able to manage them. In fact, managing those expectations is probably job one, and I think he started. Um, the, the, I think that Barack Obama has an instinct for working with uh, folks on the other side of the aisle. John Podesta has said that there is no distinction between economic policy and health care. That health care is one of the most important economic policies. Uh, so they're going to treat them one and the same. If this is truly a time of crisis and the country needs to move forward boldly, quickly, then you want to have strong majorities in the House and the Senate. Uh, if, this is not, if this is not a time of crisis, I think we need a good, strong check. The only thing I would add to that is it may well be that Barack Obama is a couple of light years ahead of the leadership in Congress, to be very honest with you. And so I think in and of itself, that's going to be a check and a balance. There are really pressing issues here that have got to be dealt with. We talked about health care and the economic stimulus package. There are whole industries that are going wanting and need some addressing. And, and that's not going to be with a long honeymoon. That's going to be with some activity pretty quick. The new president has talked a lot about sacrifice. I don't know how many of the people who voted for him really understand exactly what that means. We may be about to find out. There's no question that when Americans are challenged, just just my opinion, but when Americans are challenged, they step up to the plate and they do better. Economic cycles come and go. This too will pass. Progress, yes, we're making it. Hope, that's there, no question about it. Young people have been turned on to politics through community service at the local level because they want to make change at the ends of their hands. Right, right here, right now. Uh, I'm very excited about this generation. Barack Obama represents part of that change, the shift from the me generation to the we generation. It's a remarkable group, and we ought to put our faith regardless of our partisanship. I think we have a bright future. And I say thank you very much to everybody who came. Well, thanks for your hospitality. David, nice to be with you, and John, you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming.